everybody. Welcome back. Well, welcome me back. You welcome back to the show and me welcome back to the country. Uh, how y'all doing today? Good to see a bunch of people already tuning in for the live show here. I have just returned from India. I am I'm not jet lagged. I'm just tired and sleeping like a normal schedule. That whole um, uh, time shifter app that I talked about before has worked out brilliantly well. I'm just tired. So today's going to be one of those like, let's just hang out and have a little chit chat kind of a show. Um, you'll notice a couple of differences here. I don't have my ears in because my entire audio interface is missing because I shipped that off for repair before I left. It just had this ongoing issue and it's not back yet. And so I'm hoping that you guys can hear me okay. It, I, I had to do some serious tweaking to get it right. I actually routed the audio through that camera, which is totally unusual and I have no way to monitor. But anyway, hopefully y'all can hear me good. Let me know in the chat room that you can. And today's show is really just a big old Q&A. What do you guys want to talk about? And I see the first question that has come up here, uh, Mr. Zach Darce. Uh, can you call me Joe? No, as a matter of fact, you can call me uh, Joseph or Photo Joseph, but Joe is not me. Um, you had a question on Twitter and I asked you to come into the show and you're already here, so that's awesome. Your question is about Lightroom and support for the uh, Panasonic or Olympic lenses. And so here's, here's the deal. Here's why in Lightroom, you will see not in the in the drop down menu that shows you all the lenses that are in there you're not going to see panasonic lenses because if you look carefully in lightroom classic it's a little bit harder to find i think in lightroom cc it's a bit more obvious and i'll show it to you here in a minute but there's a little info button if you click on that it'll tell you that an automated lens profile a built-in lens profile has already been applied see lightroom doesn't have profiles built into it for these lenses because the cameras, that's the Olympics and Panasonic cameras, have the profile built into the lens and that profile gets embedded in the raw file. And so when you shoot with one of those, the correct, the distortion correction profile that is needed is built into the file itself and so Lightroom doesn't have to make its own. So every time you see one from Canon, Nikon, whatever on there, that's something that Adobe has made to correct for any, any variations in the lens, any distortion in the lens and so on but the Panasonic files and the Olympus files have them built in. So here's how you can tell. Um, now I've got, I've got Lightroom Classic, I'm uh, sorry, Lightroom CC loaded up here and this is shot with an old Canon lens. And on Classic, if you look under optics, you would see a drop down. Here, curiously, it doesn't actually show me anything about the Canon lens, which kind of surprised me. I, I, don't, I don't really know why that is. But if I pull up, let me just go, I don't know why that's taking forever to load. Let me, uh, let me just pull up another file here and I'll show you a Panasonic file. And let's just get something from this trip that I just did since, you know, why not pull up something here? Uh, let's pull up a photo that's not bad. It's always nice. Let's look at some decent photos here. Let me do a quick little filter on here and I'll show you that. Eventually you'll get there. You know, I know how to use my software. It's just taking its time to load. You know why it is taking time to load is because I haven't actually launched Lightroom on this machine s until just right before the show started. And um, and it hasn't downloaded. It's like downloading everything right now, which hopefully is not messing with the stream. Come to think of it, I better pause that. Let's just pause that thinking. Okay, so back to this. Anyway, so here's a picture that was shot with a Lumix lens. If I go back into that panel in here, scroll down, scroll down, here we go. You see under optics, it says built-in lens profile applied. If I click on that, it'll actually tell me Panasonic GH5 shot with the Leica Noctocron 42.5 F1.2. It gives you a little bit more information in here. Basically what I just said, the RAW file contains a built-in lens profile. So that's the answer to your question. It's not that Lightroom isn't supporting it, it's that it doesn't have to. The profiles are built in already. So with that out of the way, let's scroll back up to the top of the chat chat here and see what's going on. So hello Burns, hello DSD and Construction Podcast. Everybody greetings, good to see you here again. Hello in the UK. And uh, yeah, it was a great trip. It was a really great trip. I'm glad a lot of you were able to see some of the pictures that I posted on Instagram. And uh, more importantly, more interestingly from this trip is I posted a bunch of stories. It's funny, I actually, my plan was to take all the stories and put them into a YouTube video. And I thought, you know, each story is like a couple seconds long or something. I'll have, you know, like 10 minute video or something. So I pulled all the stories off of my phone. I dropped them on a Final Cut timeline. It was 30 minutes long. I'm like, yeah, maybe not. Maybe I'm not going to do this. If you want to see the stories, if you go to Instagram, if you go to the, uh, what do they call it, the highlights, 
there's India 1 and India 2, and it's broken into two because the story can only have 100 clips in it, which kind of tells you how long it was. But you can kind of watch those and skip through them. The nice thing on the stories is you can sk skip past them quite quickly if, you know, you get the gist of it and move on. But I kind of documented the entire thing. Except there's a gap. There's like a two-day gap that's completely missing. Stories just stopped for two days. It just, everything I posted just disappeared. It was super weird. But anyway, anyway, there it is. So let's see what else is going on. Uh, Martin, greetings to, to you in London as well. Welcome home. I thank you very much. Oh, Zach, thank you very much for the contribution. That's very kind of you. I guess that means I answered your question. Um, construction podcast, what do I think of the S1 and S1R? What would make you ask that? So I'm hoping, just, okay, first of all, as is completely typical, when I'm on the road, some major announcement sort of thing happens. It's just like, it's just par for the course, isn't it? So the details, the full, not full specs, but a m bunch more detailed specs were released on the new Lumix full frame mirrorless cameras, the S1 and S1R. And of course that happened while I was in India. So I was able to, fortunately I got the info um, like a day before, so I was able to record a video, got up super early one morning, recorded a video, edited it and uploaded it so it could be released at the embargo lifting time and was able to give you my thoughts on that. And I went through the press release, all the feature specs that were in there, at least I, I think I got all of them, hopefully I got all of them, and just you know, gave you some little, maybe a little bit more information, some context about it. So if you haven't seen that, it is the previous video before this one. Just look at the YouTube channel. You'll see the whole thing. It's like, a, it's like 13 or 14 minutes long. It's not super long. And I just basically went through the important parts of the press release and talked about it. But I am, as you might imagine, quite excited. I am hoping to, uh, in fact, I know I will be having my hands on it very soon. Don't know exactly how much I'll be able to share as soon as I have it. I know some people have already gotten them. There's kind of a whole press thing and some people got them for a short amount of time. I'm going to have one soon. No promises on how much I'll be able to give you and when because I just don't know. But I'll find out a lot more next week and then I should be able to update you and at least tell you when. Shark, welcome back from India. Why, thank you very much. Hopefully the Indians customs officers took nothing off of me. Not this time. <clears throat> He's referring to last time I went to India last fall. I had this little um, Leatherman tool. You know, Leathermans have like a knife in them, right? But Leatherman makes a miniature tool that is specifically for flying that doesn't have a knife. Great, little plier, screwdriver, you know, the basics of it, just no knife blade, so that you can take it on the airplane. Indian customs decided, not customs, whatever you call it, uh, security, decided that that qualified as a tool, which, okay, it does, but they have a no tools allowed. Not no knives, no, I mean, obviously no knives as well, but a strict no tools, and they took it from me. So upset. So I, I never even got to use it. I opened it, went, oh, this is cool, put it in my bag, and then they took it. So $30, very well spent. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yvonne says 30 minutes is fine. Um, I don't know what that is, but sure, 30 minutes is always fine. Cognition says rocking that ever so slight suntan. Do, is it? Do I have a little bit of a... Yeah, I was out in the sun quite a lot, so I guess that would make sense. Shark, S1 and S1R are disappointing. Crop in with a 4K 60 10-bit and record limited 29 minutes. They're not primarily video cameras, man. And what other full-frame camera does 4K 60? I'll wait for you to let me know. Um, it's a slight crop on when you're doing 60, but only 4K 60. It's just 4K 30 without the crop. And uh, the recording time limit is... Uh, well, I have no idea why that is, but it is. But again, if you're looking for a camera for video, man, get the GH5 and GH5S. The S1 and the S1R... I mean, the S1 has clearly got video features in it, but let's be honest. GH5 and GH5S, man. Um, oh, Ivan says, 30 minutes reference to the Instagram stories. Yeah, that's... It's too long. You don't want to watch that for 30 minutes. Seriously, if you want to watch it, go to the Instagram. Go to my Instagram, Photo Joseph, obviously. Look at the highlights. You go to my account, and then you'll see India 1, India 2. Just tap on there, and you can flip through them a lot quicker than that. Because part of the reason it's so long, and I know I could go in and edit it down, but I, it would still be at least 20-plus minutes, is the stills get dropped on the timeline for a bit of a duration. And some of the videos that come off of Instagram are a bit longer, and like anything, what do they call it, the bounce or whatever that effect is, boomerang effect, those repeat maybe 10 times or something. It's just, <clears throat> I got other stuff that's more important to edit. That video is out there. You can watch it there, but thank you. Uh, let's see here. What else, what else, what else? Anything else in the comments yet? Nothing else yet. So get your questions, get your, uh, get your thoughts in there. We'll, we'll pursue those. Uh, let's see here, what else? What am I gonna do this week? So I've got, if the weather holds, it is currently, uh, well, it snowed a lot this weekend. I actually didn't know if I was going to make it home, but then I did. Um, <clears throat> we had a lot of snow, and I have a couple of videos about neutral density filters that I plan on shooting tomorrow and or Wednesday. Ideally, shoot tomorrow, edit Wednesday, release Thursday. That's the plan. 
ND filters on camera, ND filters on a drone. There's something else related. Now I forget, but I'm planning on shooting those tomorrow so I can get those out for Thursday show. That is the that is the hope. Oh, I know what we can do. Did you guys enter that uh, that contest for the RGB ring light? Where's my RGB ring light? Oh, I think Sean barred it. I don't know where it is. Anyway, you know that RGB ring light that I showed you guys a few weeks ago? I did a contest. You guys could offer. You guys could enter to win it. Contest is over. Let's pick a winner because that is sitting right here and ready to go. A total of 921 entries. The contest has ended. I do believe it is time to draw a winner. So I go over to the winners tab here. I haven't done this in forever. I don't remember exactly how this works, but it's just the thing. One prize left. That's the one light. Draw winners. I click on that. Uh, winners to draw. Okay, we're going to say one. Uh, drawing within a date range. Oh, I have to upgrade. That's fine. I don't need that. Total. Oh, so it's almost 1,000 entries, but only 213 people entered. How did you guys not all enter this contest? You get a free RGB light. It was super cool. How did you miss this? Well, too late now. Too late now. Okay, so winners to draw one. I guess that's it. Draw. Drum roll, please. Answer is Mr. Fred Madden. Ooh, probably should hide his email address. Well, there you go. Fred Madden, you have won. I will reach out to you and maybe a bunch of other people will too now that everybody in the world has your email address from uh, Corona, California. Excellent. Well, Fred Madden, if you happen to be watching live, congratulations. If you're not, I will let you know. Shark says, how many lenses did you use with the GH5 in India? Ooh, that's a good question. Actually, here we go. I was going to do, I thought about doing a, um, a bag you know, what's in my bag while I was there. I didn't, well, for one really good reason, mainly. I could, I suppose I could have shot somewhere, I could have gone live, would have loved to have done a live and just gone through what's in my bag. The internet in every hotel was so bad. I mean, just like, oh, one megabit. I actually had a discussion with the manager in the hotel in the first hotel I was at in Calcutta. And um, he says, you know, he's coming, I'm like down in the lobby having a beer and he goes, oh, is everything good with your stay? Everything fine? I go, yeah, everything's fine except for your internet. Oh, what's wrong with the internet? It looked really slow. Hold on, let me get the IT guy. IT guy comes over, he grabs my laptop, does a little speed test. He goes, yeah, it's working fine. Look, you have one megabit. One, yeah, yeah, that's all we get. Like, come on, man. Anyway, okay, so here's what I brought. Oh, let's get this out of the way. This is feeling heavier than it really was. That grunt was because I'm tired. Um, I brought with me, now here's some irony for you. I brought, last time when I went to India, I brought the G9 and the GH5S. And I shot primarily video. I'm going to shot a bunch of stills, but I really shot a lot of video, of which you guys still haven't seen yet. One day, you will, um, with the G9, and had some issues with because it's an NTSC camera shooting the PAL region, which I have talked about extensively here. Um, if you missed that, just scroll back to previous shows. Look for the one about shooting PAL and shooting an NTSC camera in a PAL region. That video talks all about that problem. And so this time, I thought I'm going to bring the GH5 and the GH5S, so I don't have that problem. And I got there and I go, why did I do that? I'm not really shooting video this time. I really want to shoot still. So I kind of flipped the bit on those. But anyway, so here's what I brought. I brought the GH5, which I did all the shooting with. The only time I used the S was when I did the video in my hotel room about the new Lumix cameras. Um, anyway, so GH5S with the 12 to 60. Used that a lot. Even though it's not the fastest lens, it's a 28 to 4. I really enjoyed using that lens. And I kind of thought that I would because I've enjoyed playing with it. Um, but it turned out to be just a perfect lens for the vast majority of work that I did there. So that was the primary. I brought the 8 to 18, almost never used it. Brought the 12 f1.4, used that a little bit, not a whole lot. Brought the Noctocron. There's the GH5S. Uh, brought the Noctocron, which I oh, whew, thought I was missing for a second there which I used a fair amount, not a huge amount. I used this a ton on my first trip. Didn't use it a huge amount. But then the lens that I ended up using way more than I expected, way more than I expected, was the 50 to 200. Now this lens is awesome. So I've talked about it on the show before. The, I had this on loan for a little while. I just got my own copy right before I left. It's the 50 to 200 f2.8 to 4, so that's a 200 to 400 mil equivalent. And especially in the Kumelo, where there were you know millions of people, and I am not exaggerating, the headline from the paper the day after, two days after we were there, the day that we were there for two days, the main day that we were there was one of seven. I hope I got that right. One of seven of the most auspicious days during this two-month period of the Kumela. That is the day when everybody does the bathing in the Ganges, and people do it on the other times too. But that's like the day. Fifty million people were there, according to the Indian news. 
Now, I would say that seems exaggerated, but okay, you're standing in the middle of a crowd. Can you tell the difference between 10 million and 50 million? Probably not. 50 million people. Whew. So anyway, I shot a ton with this there just to get close-ups portraits of people that were a bit farther away. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So huge, huge props to that lens. Really, really worked out well. In fact, no, I can't do that now. I was going to do a quick scan of the library, but it hasn't all updated there to tell you um, how many shots were done with that lens. But I've been posting on Instagram some of the shots from this. I will be continuing to post more over the coming weeks from this setup. But there is the answer to the question of what lenses I brought and used. Okay. <sighs> Let's see here. Where are we? Let me scroll back up into the comments. There's a bunch more going on. And where is it? There we go. Okay. Construction Podcast, is your schedule only two days a week now? That is correct. It is now Monday afternoon and Thursday morning. And then I do the live training show on uh, Thursday afternoon now as well. So I know it keeps changing. I went from three to two after Ryan left because it became more manageable and I rearranged the schedule into an afternoon and a morning so that my Monday morning wasn't a panic attack of trying to get ready for the show. So Monday afternoon is a show, Thursday morning is a show. That is the schedule for now. Obviously, it could change at any time. The live training was on Wednesdays and then I realized this is silly. I only have one day when I don't have a live show. So now I move that show to Thursday. So Thursday's kind of a hectic day for me here, but it means that Tuesdays and Wednesdays are wide open to shoot, edit, and deliver other projects, which is what I needed. So that's the schedule right now. Shark says, how many lenses did you use? We just went through that cognition. Used a dummy battery coupler to a DC cable from a, re from a remote Audio 98, don't know who that is, um, with our 98, oh, watt hour, okay. Remote audio 98 watt hour battery from battery distribution systems, blah, 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 and it killed your camera. Ooh, boy, that sounds crappy. So you had a dummy battery coupler into the battery and it killed the camera. Oof, brutal. Do me a favor, Cognition One, send me this info in a tweet uh, with full specs of everything so I can blast that out of do not do this combination, it's deadly. Oof, that's terrible, I'm sorry to hear that. Martin Greville Giddings, US only, so I couldn't enter. Oh, the contest, yeah, I know, sorry. It's because shipping internationally becomes a whole other thing and I end up paying like, or you could end up paying import taxes that are you know, as much as the value of the thing. I pay shipping, it's like, it just ends up, it didn't, it was, I'm sorry, maybe next time. Uh, Graham Dunn, didn't enter because only opens US, yeah, got that, sorry. Um, Assured Creative Media, have you ever used or thought of using an Interface. Oh, an interface of the Lightroom. Yeah, I've been looking at the Loop Deck, but also looked at using a MIDI controller and MIDI 2LR. Okay, Loop Deck I did a review on ages and ages ago. Um, very, very cool product. My thoughts on that, just very briefly, but by all means, please go back and watch the video. Just search Photo Joseph Loop Deck, you'll find it. Um, if you are doing the type of editing where you're doing repetitive editing for a long period of time, such as editing a wedding, where you're going to be doing a lot of adjustments again and again and again. I think it's brilliant. If, however, like me, you generally edit one photo at a time, I will, usually I don't sit down and edit a whole long shoot. I mean, I, you know, I do commercial shoots and in those cases, sometimes I do sit and do longer edits, but it's kind of rare these days. So it's more like my travel stuff and I'll edit kind of one or two at a time. I don't feel that that interface would really benefit me. There's obviously a learning curve to getting quick at the interface and I am, quite frankly, most often not sitting at my desk when I'm doing my editing. These days, I do the vast majority on this thing right here. Uh, Lightroom CC on there is awesome. And that's the second reason I don't use it is because I'm using Lightroom CC now, not Lightroom Classic. And as far as I know, there's no hardware support from anybody for Lightroom CC. I think it's just the, the hooks have not been built into Lightroom CC yet. So that's the second reason I don't use it. I think they're cool. I think if you do a specific type of editing, they're awesome. Uh, for a lot of users, it's just, it's a bigger learning curve than you need. But if you're shooting stuff like weddings, I think by all means you should go for it. Watch my video about it. All right, Cognition, <coughs> Cognition says, so if you can spend it, it's recommended to treat the GH5 and GH5S as a pair and get them both. Yes, I would say so. Reason being, the GH5S, obviously better low light performance, but you lack the stabilization. GH5 is certainly your all around. If you're gonna buy one camera, get the GH5. If you're gonna buy two, I would definitely say to get the GH5S as your secondary instead of two GH5s. That's really the way to go. And then if you're gonna buy a third camera, 
I would most likely go back to another GH5. So you have two GH5s and a GH5S. But yeah, having that option to go better low light performance, um, or even if you're doing something like a car mount, you really don't want the stabilized sensor on a car mount. It works to your disadvantage. Having this on a car mount, the GH5S, is a much better plan. And I did a whole video about that as well, if you look through my back videos on, I think it was like a GH5 versus GH5S stabilization video. If you search those keywords, you'll find it. Make sure you put Photo Joseph in there. And I did a side-by-side the two cameras and you can see the difference and there's uh, just mounting in a car, suction mount in a car and this looks way cleaner because the magnetic, st magnetically stabilized sensor wasn't bouncing around from car movement. So there you go. All right. Shark, how did you stabilize the GH5S while taking photos? As you know, it has no IBIS. I didn't use it to take photos. So on this trip, I used the GH5. If I mixed that and said the wrong thing earlier, I apologize. I used the GH5 for all of my photography. The GH5S I brought with me as a backup for stills. Obviously, it's not a primary still camera, um, lower resolution too, so that would be bad. Um, I brought it as a backup, but really I brought it so if I was doing any low light video, which I only ever did once in my hotel room at four o'clock in the morning. So there you go. <clears throat> Martin says, got my tax rebate last month. Woohoo, enough to get the 50 to 200. Excellent. Please use my link down below or somewhere. It's not in this video, but search for one of the videos on the 50 to 200, use that link. I would appreciate that. It's a great lens. I, I'm, I know I said it when I first did my, my kind of review. I, you know, I don't really do reviews of the Panasonic equipment because <laughs> kind of biased. But when I first showed that one to you guys, I know I said that I did not think this was a lens that I was going to, not, not that I wouldn't like it, but that I wouldn't have a use for it. I don't usually use, I don't have a need for really long lenses. But then I used it for a while. I was like, well, this is really cool. But that was on... I took it onto a little mini safari kind of thing here in Oregon, and you know, obviously you got animals, great, that's a totally great use case for it. Br brought it on this trip because I'll bring it, maybe I'll use it, blown away at how much I used it. Just spectacular, spectacular lens. Alrighty, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Martin says, Claudia Brownstone does a ton of street photography with the 50 to 200. Nice, I'll have to look up Claudia Brownstone. Cognition, DSD, I was only a month into owning my camera and I got a new one on warranty. Oh, I'm glad you got a new one on warranty. But yeah, do tell me about that whole oof, terrible job tree. Do you think the S1 will replace or be drastically better than the GH5 for videography? No, I don't. I really don't. Um, yes, you're going to have better low light performance simply because of the larger sensor. It'll be very interesting to compare, though, the S1 to the GH5S in low light. That'll be interesting. And I think Griffin Hammond might have already done a little bit of that. I think he did some kind of comparison. Check out his channel. <clears throat> Griffin's a great guy. He's one of the Lumix um, ambassadors, and he's got, he had his hands on one because he did a short film for Panasonic, and I think he did a comparison. Um, anyway, so do, will it replace me drastically better? Certainly not my workflow it won't replace it. I like having these smaller, lighter cameras. That's kind of why I got into the whole Micro Four Thirds thing in the first place. And, um, you know, you want to put a S1 on a gimbal, ooh, you're talking about a big, heavy rig. So. I'm still down for this. Ah, Ivan says, what does the crystal ball say? When is Panasonic's follow-up to the GH5 coming? Uh, I know you'll be shocked, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be called the GH6, and I have absolutely no idea. So there you go. My crystal ball says, eventually. How's that for you? Okay, what else is going on in here? Anything else? Uh, nothing else yet? All right, let's see here. Anything else I want to tell you? Keep following the Instagram. Lots of photos going to be posted up there. Oh, I lost a the rear while crossing a bridge with like thousands of people on it. And I realized I know that I had it on the bridge because I know I had been shooting and I, I just, I know it was there. And then I looked down a couple of minutes later and it was gone. And I kind of went, oh, I should turn around and go get that. And I turned around and there were like 10,000 people walking towards me. And I thought, maybe not. Off we went. So I just pilfered it off of the GH5S, which means I now need to get a replacement eye cup. Bummer, but there you go. Otherwise, no problems at all. Batteries lasted an impressively long time. I'd go through two, maybe three a day, and that was constantly shooting. We walked, during the day of the Kumamela, the main day, we walked 15 miles. There's a lot of walking going on there. Hey, Cognition says, if you were buying lenses for the first time ever, what would you get and in what order? For still or for video, it makes a difference. Let me know. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna scroll back up real quick and see if I missed anything earlier. It was a great trip, DSD, thank you. So hey, you guys, you know, I'm going to do these kind of India workshops again. So if you want to come, 
make sure you're following at Photo Joseph, all those places, but sign up for the newsletter. If you go to photojoseph.com, somewhere on that page, there's a whole newsletter sign up. Click on that and um, make sure you check the box that says workshop announcements or something, because that's where the workshops get announced first. I am going to do another India one. I, I'm like 99% sure, which basically probably means 100% sure at this point, that it is not going to be this year. I'm going to wait until the fall of next year of 2020. And that is going to be the Pushkar Camel Fair and a tour through Rajasthan, which is some of the, which is the state that I was in for the second half of my scouting trip last m year, last fall. Um, but with the Pushkar Camel Fair, which is like an insane, awesome thing. So that's going to be the next India one, most likely. And then I will probably also do the Kumel again in 2025. But something interesting, this is very interesting. One of my guests, one of my um, tour guests is still in India. He, they stay, he and his daughter stayed behind for a few extra days. And um, he sent me a newspaper clipping from Sunday, the day after we all left, that said that photography has now been banned at the Kumela within, I think it was 100 meters of the water because of too many photographers down there taking pictures of the bathers, of the, um, the devotees that are there to be blessed in the water. And I thought, that was very interesting because as someone who was just there with a camera, every single person that I pointed a camera at was so happy to have their photo taken, posing, smiling, pausing what they were doing so they could have a nice picture of them taken. Um, out in the streets, there were some people that said no, obviously respect that, move on. But in the Kum itself, every single person I pointed a camera at, more than happy to have their picture taken. So it really makes me wonder what small percentage of people who had a, a voice loud enough voice to get the government to say no more. Very interesting, very interesting. Okay, anyway, so that means that I don't know if in 2025, if they haven't changed the rule, if they're enforcing that rule, then I can't do a photo tour there. I mean, that would be, that would be kind of a bummer. Anyway, all right, let's see here. Scrolling through the comments, see if I missed anything else. Bring that back up here, I don't think so. And, do, 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 do. Let's see, I thought it was something. How risky, oh, here we go, uh, there we go. DSD, how risky is it to use off-brand GH5 batteries? Not worth the risk. Off-brand uh, DC couplers, fine. Batteries, no. Just remember, if a company as big as Samsung can screw up a battery as bad as they did, then you really don't want to risk third-party batteries in your camera. Just don't do it. Batteries are not that expensive. I get they're not cheap, right? But they're not that expensive. It's not worth risking. How many photos did I shoot this trip? I'll tell you, uh, a couple thousand, I think. Remember, too, I was teaching, right? So I wasn't shooting nonstop like I would be if I was on completely on my own. Um, oh, thank you very much, Zach. That's awesome. Zach has a question to go with that contribution. What do you think about putting a Tamron 70 to 200 f 2.8 with a dummy dummy adapter on the G85 for an effective 154? To, okay, so uh, I get you, an adapter. Um, with the 2.2 crop for concert video. Probably be fine. Maybe a little on the slow side, because you're what is it going to be like an F4 at that point? You might want a shallower, you want more better light gathering capability, but and the autofocus is going to be slower. But I mean, it'll work. It'll absolutely work. My preference would be to shoot with a. Oh wait, are you talking? No, seven, would that be a faster aperture? Which which adapter are you talking about using? If you use a dumb adapter, then it's just kind of a, a pass through. There's no optics. If you're using a. Um, uh, I always forget the name of it, the, the one, speed booster. If you're using a speed booster, then awesome. But you are talking about a bigger, bigger collection as well. Um, this doesn't, Lightroom CC on here doesn't give you a image count for a whole folder. See, I've got it set up like this. Um, you can see like that one's here. Somebody wants to do this math real quick. Here, somebody have to do the math. 80 plus 617 plus 780 plus 92 plus 625 plus 1059 plus 198 plus 546 plus 181 plus 220. That's like almost 3,000, I think. That's a lot of pictures. And a lot of them are obviously rubbish, but there you go. Um, anyway, Zach, I, I don't know if that's a complete answer for you, but I'm sure it will work. It'll work. If you're talking about a dumb adapter that has no speed boosting capability, then I think it might be a little bit on the slow side. Okay, going back. Zach, what do you think about, oh, there's that same question. Um, Martin, would you keep both the 35 to 100 f2.8 and the 50 to 200 or trade the 35 to 100 for a different lens? I would definitely keep the 35 to, to 100 because A, it's a fixed f2.8. Um, if you're doing primarily video, that's gonna be to your advantage. Uh, having that, especially as you're zooming through, if you wanna zoom during the shot, it's not gonna change your exposure. Um, obviously it's a less range, but yeah, I mean, you got 
200, if 200 mil equivalent F2.8, yeah, I would, I would keep it. I wouldn't get rid of that 35. The 35 to 100, 100 F2.8 is one of those staple lenses, right? The 12 to 35 and the 35 to 100 F2.8 all the way through, that should be in every cinematographer's kit. Uh, wouldn't leave that behind. Jake, greetings. Uh, ooh, DSD says, I've had some Watson batteries start to swell from my G85. See, there you go. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, Zach, only use manual focus, no focal reducer, so I can get the extra reach. Okay, well, if it's just about getting the extra reach, then I'm sure it'll be fine. It, it will be a little bit slower. Remember, less light gathering capability, but I think you'll be okay. I think you'll be okay. Um, and bring, you know, a, another lens just in case that's a bit shorter, but we'll give you the speed. Um, I don't think an answer came into my question or to the question about what lenses would I buy? Where was that? Um, I don't know where that question was, but I'm not sure where that went. But somebody had the question about which lenses would I buy, and I haven't seen a whether an answer to my question, whether it would be for so, uh, photos or video, stills or video yet. So if that question is still coming, pop it in there, and I'll get that up. Otherwise, otherwise, we're going to wrap this thing up. It's <sighs> a lot of talking for a very, like, I'm ready for a nap. Yeah. That happens after these trips. Like, you know, just ready for a nap. Hopefully my audio interface will be back here soon and I can... Nobody ever told me, I'm assuming you can hear me just fine. Obviously you can hear me. It's, I don't think it's quite as loud as normal, but I think it's okay. Um, Shark, Photo Joseph. Thank you, Shark. I'm assuming there's supposed to be a question in there, but um, I'll let you type that in. And then, let's see here. I guess that's it. I guess that is it. All right, guys, hey, thanks a bunch. As always, super fun to see you guys. Good to be back. Um, oh, nice live audience crowd size today. That's awesome to see you. And yeah, I guess we're going we're gonna to knock it out at this point. Take care of yourselves, everybody. We'll see you on Thursday for a video, hopefully, about ND filters. If not, then I'll make something else up, and we'll do it before we go. And uh, it is good to be back, Construction Podcast. Thanks for having me back. And uh, oh, Graham Durham says it's about the same as Norman. I don't know who Norman is, so I'm just going to move on from there. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.